Yes, sir. Yeah. Good Sorry, evening. Uh, my name is Jim Peck. I'm the chair of the Plastow Planning Board, and welcome to the Planning Board meeting of September 2nd, 2020. Uh, first thing I need to do is read this uh, very interesting and a uh, little bit boring statement on COVID-19. So bear with me again. I'm getting pretty good at this. Plastow Planning Board, due to the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis in accordance with Governor Sinu's emergency order number 12 pursuant to executive order 2020-04 is authorized to meet electronically and these reasons shall be reflected in the minutes. Notice of this electronic meeting was sent to all abutters and published in the Eagle Tribune newspaper. The Plastow Planning Board is utilizing the GoToWebinar program of the GoToMeeting platform for this electronic meeting. The public has access to contemporaneously listen if necessary participate in this meeting the link to the access to access this meeting was provided on the town's website please report any issues to j peck j p e c k at plastow.com there is a raise your hand feature of the program that will allow attendees to participate in the discussion there is also a q a box for the public to type questions during the meeting the public can also send emails with questions or concerns prior to or during the meeting to jpeck at plastel.com. Please note all questions and concerns typed into the Q&A box or sent via email will be read aloud to become part of the public record. The meeting will also be live on Plastel Access Cable, Channel 17, and will be live streaming on the town's website. So with that done, um, I'll ask, uh, actually, I'd like to introduce Charlene um, Glorio. Did I Glorio. pronounce right? Charlene oh, yeah. Glorio is our new I'll, I'll recording ask almost secretary. Anything. Charlene is really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, we welcome you here, and the first thing you can do is do the roll call. Very good. Um, James Peck. Here. Timothy Moore. Here. Lori Millette. Here. Karen Robinson. Here. Francine Hart. Here. Jeffrey Adams. Here. Tom Alberti. Here. Did I miss anybody? Uh, Greg Talon, who's the alternate, is not going to be here. I, I don't think he's going to he be excused? here. Is he excused? Well, he, he doesn't need to be here. He doesn't need to be here. Okay. He's, he's not, you don't have to put, he can just say he's not attending. He's and not excused director, or anything. And the planning director, John? He's not required to be here. Okay. And I'm here. And I also should say that uh, John Cashel uh, contacted me this morning, and he will not be making it. Um, that's the last thing I heard from him. Although I wouldn't be surprised if he got a, a burst of energy and he might show up on the, on the, uh, the, uh, you know, go to meeting. Okay. So the first item on the agenda is, well, I should introduce uh, to the public anyway. Tom Alberti is the new. Um, Alternate, he's starting tonight. He was sworn in today. So, Tom, welcome. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to working with you for many years <laughs> or months, anyway. <laughs> um, first item on the agenda is review and approval of the August 19, 2020 minutes. You should have them in your folder. They're quite long, so I hope you had a chance to read them. Um, I pinch hit last time. We didn't have a recording secretary, so I did my best to go back and watch the tape, and this is what I came up with. So uh, if you want to just take a, a minute or so to take a look at them, or if you're all set, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of August 19th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of August 19th. Motion by Tim, second by Karen. Any discussion? Amendments or anything? There being none, I call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Uh, 401. Motion passes. And we move on to the only item we have tonight, and that's a workshop item. Um, I can't remember exactly when the last workshop we had was. I think it was last November, I, wasn't it? I think it might be in last year. Yeah, it was last year. So with COVID and everything, and then the summer, and we had some long meetings, uh, hearings, we really haven't had a workshop. So it was, uh, John Cashel actually um, recommended that we talk about the rules, the planning board rules, 
And so that's the sole subject tonight. Um, you should have the rules in your package. And I also included uh, something that looks like this. You should have, which is a um, kind of a, a all the different, not all of them, but most of the RSAs that are pertinent to the rules. Just so you have the actual RSA. So one of the things I was going to say about the rules is these rules have been in uh, in effect for the planning board for 24 years. And before I get into the rules, I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of the planning board. I think I find my notes. Um, if you look at the handout that I gave you, the first thing in the handout is a uh, from the 1956 town report. And it shows you that uh, that's the report from the planning board. It was that short, Tim, back then. It was not as long as it is today. Uh, it was just short and sweet to say that the planning board was formed in 1956 and listing the, um, the members. At that time, the members were uh, appointed by the selectmen. And one of them was a selectman, and four were appointed. It was not, they were not elected at that time. Uh, fast forward to 1980, I'm sorry, 1994. In 1994, a um, petition warrant was put forward uh, to change the, um, the election, change from, if you look at the second page of the handout I gave you, you can see that warrant at the bottom. It's warrant number 32 in 1994. And uh, what the town had to do is when they, decided you wanted to elect them, and it's actually, you can see it's a petition by George Melvin and others at the bottom. Um, that was put forward to elect planning board members at that time. And at that time, it was going to be six elected members plus the ex officio at that time. That, mo that uh, warrant did pass 83-65. So ever since then, we've had an elected planning board. And I believe uh, 1996, uh, Tim, you were the first chair of the the first elected planning board. Um, so a couple years later, actually 1998, you can see at the bottom of the page, I wrote Article 9849, the total number of members were reduced to five from seven. So instead of having uh, four elect uh, six elected, you had four elected and still have an ex officio. And that was because we couldn't get a quorum. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a little bit of the history. Um, I want to just kind of, uh, as we go through the rules, what, I, what I'm going to suggest, if nobody has any objections, just take it from the beginning. Um, first of all, I want to get out of here by 8.30, no later than 8.30, uh, hopefully earlier. We're going to have the continuing discussion. This is not the final, you know, review of the rules. I suspect we'll, we'll have some time on the 16th. On the 16th, at this point in time, we only have one hearing, it's, and it's too late to actually post any more public hearings. So we have one hearing. I think it's on Skip's Garage, um, change of use. That shouldn't take a lot of time, so I, I suspect that next time we can, we can add the uh, rules and continue our discussion. So tonight is meant to be a healthy discussion of the rules, if you will. And, you know, it's good to review these rules. I mean, you could call them bylaws, I suppose. Most other groups, they call them bylaws. But the reason they're called rules of procedure is because the Office of Strategic Initiative at the state of New Hampshire put out a proposal years ago that said everybody, every planning board should have rules of procedure. And they, they gave an example uh, exhibit of what should be in that rules of procedure. And ever since then, just about every town that I've looked at has rules of procedure. So <clears throat> it's very important, you know, these rules, you know, if we're going to have rules, and, I, you know, I asked him before, have we always abided by all these rules? And he, your answer was, Tim, yeah, we, we, these are important rules, and we try to abide by them. Yeah. So it's important that we, we have rules that fit. If they don't fit, we should probably make changes. So. I have a few suggestions for changes tonight. Uh, we talked earlier about the fact that you need to have two readings of those changes. And, you know, if this is not the first reading, the next time could be the first. I'm not in any rush to, like, say we need the first reading tonight. 
we can talk about them and then we can you know decide you know whether we need to the other question I have for you Tim is if you look at the OSI suggested rules the last paragraph in there for amendments it says you have a public hearing for one public hearing it doesn't say two when you have changes to rules but our our rules for example the last part of our rules if you go to the last, very last page it says it doesn't say anything about a hearing it just says um, it just says there'll be two readings of it so I I'm going to one of the suggestions we're going to make is that we add to the last section 225-8 which is a very end ending uh, paragraph that, that we have a public hearing I think it's important to have a public hearing on the change in the rules and I have some wording to that effect so with that introduction I thought what we do is just start right at the beginning and, and walk through this and as we walk through it I'm going to refer to this handout that I gave you which has the actual RSAs in it so you can read the RSAs and to, to a large extent the verbiage in our rules is right out of the RSA word for word so let's start at the top uh, first thing to note is that um, they were adopted in 1996 amended twice 2006 and some of us were here for an amendment in 2019 and there was some discussion at that time so so anyway if you start if we go through each each uh, paragraph I, I'd like us to read it and then um, decide whether we need to make any changes and, and if you know if I, I've read it and I don't think there'll be a change I still would like to read it I'll say I don't think there needs to be a change unless anybody objects we'll move to the next paragraph does that work for everybody okay all right so 225-1 authority these rules a procedure adopted under the authority of New Hampshire revised statutes annotated 676 one I believe I have that in the handout I think it's number four page four on uh, number three and that's you know all it really says is every local land use board shall adopt rules of procedure <laughs> that's it <laughs> and uh, it's important to understand what if you go to number four on my handout what does local land use board mean um, this defines exactly what a local land use board is um, 672.7 which is number handout number four if you're following me in the handouts I, I passed out so it says local land use board means a planning board obviously historic district commission which we don't have in Plastow inspector of buildings I didn't realize that would be a land use board and I'm not sure if we really apply it that way a building code board of appeals doesn't apply to us and then the ZBA or any other board so that that's what a local land use board is so the first paragraph I think you know there's no need to change it unless anybody objects I think that's pretty much a no-brainer okay so the second paragraph says members so it consists of five members four of whom should be elected fifth member should be a selectman designated body body blah so I don't think there's any need to change paragraph a there unless anybody else does if not I'll just keep talking here the second um, paragraph paragraph B selection qualification term removal and filling of vacancies shall conform to RSA 673 and I think I do have 673 in here some parts of it I think it's number five in the handout establishment of local land use boards and that just says establishment and there's a whole bunch of other things in 673 that talks about qualification term removal I didn't put that in your handout actually I put a few in there we'll, we'll come to them in a minute so that's right out of the RSA um, subparagraph one parentheses one training within 12 months of assuming office for the first time any member is encouraged to complete at least six hours of training now in the RSA it doesn't say that you need six hours I think that's something we added the RSA just says that you need to get training each member needs to get training I think that's a good requirement and I, I wouldn't change that mm -hmm. sorry Francine um, I agree with you. However, it says offered by the Office of Strategic Initiatives. 
I've never heard of that. And we, do you think, does this board think that that sentence needs to be fleshed out a little bit by giving a little bit more information as oh, to? Oh, the office of, I can explain, maybe Tim knows more about it. Well, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't recognize that name, but they put together the planning handbook that's used by all planning boards. So, so I guess my, my thought is, do you think yeah. that needs to be specified or at least flesh out in this six hours of training thing? Because when you give this to someone, you know, I don't know if Tom knows where to go or what to do or what he's supposed to be yeah. trained on. So that may, you may want to think about fleshing that out a little bit more, but that's just, I'm just offering that out to the board. There's a little bit more when you, when you come to the responsibilities of planning staff, it talks about the type of planning a little bit further on. So maybe we could wait and look at that if that's okay. not enough. We could. I think Karen, have, yeah. Sorry. Um, but I want to know more specifically where do you go for it and yeah. where, you know, that's not mentioned at all anywhere. Go for what? Go for the six-hour training. In the responsibilities, oh, okay. well, then under, all right. these pages aren't numbered, but it's, um, let me find it. I went over the old one. Under planning staff, which is, uh, I'm going to say one, two, three, page four. Uh, their duties then it says planning staff it um, I think on the next page item number what page which one is it yeah there's something about education or training Yeah, but that has to do with planning staff, not board members, right? No, but it would talk about the type of planning. Oh, it says on the next page, number 14, shall from time to time prepare planning training updates for board members. And somewhere else in here that it talks about the type of training, I thought. Oh, I know. It's actually in the RSA, so maybe we ought to just pull it out of the RSA. It would be helpful. I, I agree. Well, the, the only thing I would caution you on that is um, I mean there's all kinds of training that comes up OSI has typically has a spring conference um, and there's always one session I think that's called planning board 101 or something like that and ZBA 101 um, however those are two, usually on a Saturday um, which is you know, not bad because it's it's a full day, so you you get there and you focus on you know a topic at hand. Yeah. On the other hand, Saturdays are hard to come by. Um, you know, not everybody wants to sit down for another eight hours on Saturday. You know, much less be away from family and whatever. Um, then there was a series of uh, law lecture series that NHMA did. Um, and those seem like the sessions that we might want to attend were on Wednesdays. Um, <clears throat> so we did, we did say if somebody wanted to attend one of those, that would be excused from the planning board meeting to get the, the training. Obviously not everybody, everyone could go. I mean, we'd still need to have a quorum and conduct business, but as those things cycled around, different people could you know, have an opportunity to do that. Um, as I think most of you were here um, a couple years ago, we had uh, Steve Buckley come down from NHMA and give a, a training. Right. Um, and he came here, yeah. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of things. Um, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be planning board I mean you might go to a session that that talked about um, town streets and, and rights of way or yeah. um, some aspect low of, impact yeah. um, construction you know so there's I mean all kinds of topics that that help um, and to try to codify that formalize it in some fashion is pretty pretty tough um, so, so I, I think that's why if we ever had those words in there, yeah. uh, I think we, t we took them out because it was. So you, you suggested maybe we leave them as broad as it is and not, not add it. That, that's what I would say. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I like the six hours. I mean, I think that's yeah. good. I think six hours is good. 
Uh -huh. um, the only thing I would say is you've, if you look at 673-3A, which is on eight, I, item number eight, I, I sent, I passed out the, uh, the actual RSA. It does say the Office of Strategic Initiatives may provide training which may be designed in a variety of formats, but not limited to web-based, distance learning, traditional classroom, and self-study. So it does elaborate upon it. I'm not sure if we need it in our roles, though. I don't know what you think. Do we need? Do you think we want to add anything, Francine? Or? Can we put as offered by the Office of Strategic Initiatives, yeah. so at least people know where to go to get this stuff? Okay. Just as a suggestion. Well, but then if you if you put that in, and then H and HMA provides a course, then that doesn't count, because your bylaws or rules of procedure have said only as offered by OSI. So. Well, maybe we we'd say as as. Um, offered by the OSI or other state agencies or something to or, that effect? Or planning commission or? The RPC yeah. did the, the oh. seminar up in Concord. Um, DES? Um, yeah, I mean, any other state agencies or, I don't know what other word to use, yeah. state agencies. Then maybe just say as offered by state agencies? Yeah, yeah. just as offered by OSI or other state agencies. Yeah. I was just wondering if they can, if there's any people that come down here that actually have right. you know, mm -hmm. because that would automatically, you know. You you, know. Your question is just, is there any, you're not suggesting we put it in the right. change, it's yeah, yeah. right. You know, I mean, it's a question because you're new, you want to know whether they can come down, yeah. right? Well, I, they, I mean, you, you can make those arrangements. Um, there's usually a cost, and I don't, Mm -hmm. Remember, but I'll say Steve Buckley. I think that, I think that was five hundred dollars to have him. Yeah, he came down here, and it was not just our town; it was no. we shared it with other towns. So right, because we we mentioned it to um, RPC that we were looking at having Steve come down. They mm -hmm. agreed that would be a good thing for the whole planning commission. So yeah. they ended up picking up the tab out of their training, so it didn't cost Plasto anything other than electricity to have the meeting here. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. So think, that, that worked out very well. And I, th I you think know. you've only been here a few meetings. I think that Dee is going to do stuff like that. She's going to, she's pretty good at saying, well, we have this, or she arranges a, and you could even ask her, say, you know, Tom and you want to get some training, and she would provide that training. I don't necessarily think we need to change the, the rules, though, other than the change we just made. And just so the newer members know, too, we consolidated training in one line item budget. So instead of having every department have a few hundred bucks for training, we consolidated it. And I think it's about $10,000, Laurie. Mm -hmm. So any department can take advantage of that. So we certainly can do that as well. Okay, so to continue on with the rules itself, mm -hmm. we should just add that as offered by the OSI or other state agencies. I'll spell out OSI. Because I, I didn't know that was what it was called before either until I read the RSA. It's had a number of, yeah. it used to be Office of State Planning, which made yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. And they get rid of that term and then. So that's the only change to training, uh, subparagraph one. And then oath of office, I didn't see anything there we needed to do there. That's right out of the RSA. Um, terms of ex officio board members, that doesn't need to be changed. Um, number D. A letter D, terms of elected and appointed members, that doesn't need to be changed, I don't think. Appointment, number, and terms, that, that's in, in accordance with 673.6. I did, I think I did include 673.6 in your package. So we're following that, basically. Oh, it's not here. In your handout, it's number, it's in there. number nine, did this handout here? Close from 673 oh, numbers. It's here. Yeah, it's page nine. Yeah, handwritten nine on the, the packet. You find it? Yep. Okay. So at the top of the next page, up to five alternates. That's right out of the RSA. It's up to five. I don't think we have to specify two or three. Just leave it up to five. And, you know, maybe a future board wants five. I, I don't know. I don't think we need five, but, you know, we have two. It's quality, not quantity. Exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> Membership vacancies, I didn't see any changes in that. Um, that just follows the RSA for an elected or appointed member. 
They're right out of the RSA, so unless anybody sees anything there. Service on other boards. Okay, if you look at handout 10, oh, I gave you that handout. It's RSA 673-7. And the service on other boards 1 and 2 in our rules is taken right from that, almost word for word, if not word for word. But I think it's important that everybody on the board understand um, what the rules are. Um, so let's read it. Um, service on all other boards and commissions shall be in accordance with 6737. Board members may serve on any other plasto board or commission provided that such multiple memberships does not result in more than two board members, including alternates serving on the same board or commission. And then it goes on to say that only one board member or alternate may serve on any other land use board. Define that as ZBA, basically. That's the only other one we have. Or on the Conservation Commission. So any member of this board, you could only one of us can be on the Conservation Commission. Tim's on the Conservation Commission, so that takes care of it. None of us could be on the Conservation Commission. As far as the ZBA is concerned, I talked to Joyce Ingers, and she's the last one in town that was both on the ZBA and the planning board, which I found a little bit strange, but that's allowed. And, uh, you know, so that, that, can, that can happen. You know, somebody here could be on the ZBA. So I don't think we need to change it, just reckon everybody know that that's, that's the way it works. Yeah, and the only the thing I would add there to important, it, it reads boards and commissions. So that specifically like the um, recycling committee yeah. would be exempt from this because it's not a board or commission. Oh, I see. So that the distinction between committee and commission. Oh, okay. Good point. It is a good point, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of our groups are committees. They do specifically say committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, meeting attendance. Um, we did change this last year um, to make it a little bit more stricter. The only change I want to make and I'm going to suggest is um, in paragraph one, board members, ex officio, and alternates are expected to attend all meetings. I think that's still you know what we want. However, in an event that they are unable to attend, I'm going to scratch a member of the board administrative staff. I'm going to change it to the planning board chair should be contacted in person or by phone prior to 3.30 p.m. And the reason for that is I think it's important that the chair know who's going to be there because, you, you know, I'm going to have to designate somebody or whatever. Well, the administrative so I'm just assistant asking, would let the chair know that. What's that? The administrative assistant would notify the chair of an absentee member if they called in. Okay, well that hasn't been happening, so I'm suggesting we Who's change been it. Missing? I'm suggesting we change it to directly to the chair. D is always informed whoever was chair. I didn't know it when you were absent the other day. They, she didn't tell me the other day. The other day for what? I just think it would be better for the chair. Yeah, yeah. It goes right to the source, and then we don't have yeah. two or three people in the loop. Exactly. And Dee doesn't have to get involved. She's got better yeah, things to do. Yeah, she's got enough to that. do. <laughs> on vacation, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> yes, good point. <laughs> yeah. And I know I, everybody has my, I, have, I now have an email, and I know that Greg Talon suggested that the email be changed from my name at Plastow to yeah. planning board chair, which I like that idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, either way, you would know who to send it to. And I, you know, my phone, I'll give you all my phone. So I would know right away that yeah. somebody's not showing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I like that. We had, um, when we first, well, I'll say when we first started doing emails, I, I take that with a little bit of grain of salt. <laughs> um, but we didn't have names. So yeah. you didn't send it to Mike Dorman. You sent yeah. it to the building inspector at yeah. Plasto.com, yeah. okay. the rec director at Plasto.com. Yeah. And I think we're going to... And then for some reason, I don't know, people wanted to see their name in lights or something. Um, <laughs> so they changed all of that. Um, so now it goes to people's names. And when the positions change, you have the wrong email address. Yeah, Francine? Yeah. So I I, the crazy, board but... is working on exactly that. And I think what we're working on for the budget is actually to do exactly what you had done before as chair of the blah, blah, blah. So whoever takes that chairman's spot, we don't have to keep changing it. And it's probably going to be less expensive, too. Yeah, so. Right. Um, we're working on it. My, our IT gurus, Jay and uh, Greg, are working on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good change. I yeah, think. It, I think so too. 
Okay, so that change again to read it back as um, instead of a member of the board administrative ta staff, scratch that and put the planning board chair. Yeah. And then the rest of it kind of, I don't see any need to change it. It's the same thing. You're just notifying the chair as opposed to the administrative staff. Now, would you, you want to leave it just by phone or? Contact it in person or by phone. We just leave it the way it is and then okay. I'll make sure people have, you know, everybody knows my email, jpeck at plasta.com. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give out my phone number. Okay. And maybe after the meeting, not for everybody in the public. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the next the next paragraph, I think we actually changed this last night, uh, last last time in December. I, I kind of remember a discussion about this, and I think it's good the way it is. Um, any member not leaving a message who does not attend shall be considered unexcused, and it shall be noted in the minutes. So in the minutes, instead of saying uh, excuse, it says unexcused. That's that's all it is. Um. The absence of a board member from three unexcused consecutive meetings or from attendance at 65% of all regularly scheduled meetings in calendar year without just cause will cause the board to consider requesting the removal, replacement of that member. I think that's, that's I think we ought to leave that in there. I mean, it's a little bit harsh, but yeah. I, I think only once or twice. Yeah, it's never happened. Have we done that? Yeah. Um, and the, it wasn't the person missed three in a row and we said, hey, Slackman. It came uh, that person had missed like 15 out of the last 20. I mean, you know, it was. I just think it's only fair to the board that, you know, you get somebody who's gonna be there and it's yeah. probably fair to that person too. At this point, they, they maybe have yeah. some issues they need to resolve, so. Well, I mean, more importantly is when people don't regularly attend and hearings are particularly long, um, big, project, the hearings are continued, um, you, you miss out now. Right. Um, and then you show up the next meeting, you're not really sure what you're, yeah. you're doing. Okay, so, so we'll leave that. Um, the third one, the same thing on an ex officio, I guess. Um, I read through that and I, I didn't see any need to change that. So we're good for two pages. We only have eight to go. We may finish before seven, uh, 730. <laughs> I doubt it. Removal of members shall be in accordance with 673.13. Um, you know, that's you know, right out of the RSA, so I don't think we need to, to change that. It's, it's almost word for word, our RSA. Okay, we move on to organization. Um, officers, the officers of the board, the first one, yeah, majority of the board votes for, uh, for the officers. We only elect a chair and a vice chair. Some boards I found actually elect a recording secretary. That's a, s a smaller town, so they would designate somebody to be recording secretary. Mm -hmm. That doesn't really work here, and we have you know a, a hired secretary, yeah. a professional secretary, <laughs> right? <laughs> no offense to people who have taken notes. So um, I don't think there's any need to change one, two, and three there. Okay, so now we get into administrative staff. In the term that's used here, it's, it's changed over the years because the support staff for the planning board has changed. And if you go back a few years, all we had was a planning director. If I'm, if I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, but if you go back to, for example, before 2014, 2014, Lee Komornik was the planning director. There wasn't it wasn't an admin assistant. Yeah, we've had. Um, and then, uh, then Greg Jones came right. in, and then Greg Jones was there through 2016, and then um, after Greg left, uh, Dee kind of went in there. She was in the um, building department, and then she she became what was called the planning coordinator, not the planning director, but planning coordinator. And then, obviously, yeah. today we have a um, an admin. She became an admin and uh, administrative assistant in 2018, and then John Cashwell came in in 2018. So now we have basically two support staff: the admin assistant and the planning director. And now, if you looked at the website, it does list Mike Dorman as a support staff for us, but I don't believe that's actually true. 
he doesn't, I mean, he answers questions, but he's not really a support staff. Right. Yeah, so he's um, so it's a, a different, um, different level, if you will. And, and you know, what, I, what I'm going to say about this is the town manager, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I'm just wondering, do we really need to list it out or can we just put planning staff? Do we have to list all these? The types of positions? Titles and, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know why we listed them, but, you know, maybe you can just say, instead of administrative staff, say planning staff under B, change it to Kind of generalize. Staff, yeah. And then under number one, just scratch IE all those different listed, particularly recording secretary, because the recording secretary is now handled differently. The recording secretary is a contract position, and I'm going to suggest we break that out separately, not under the uh, planning staff. That is separate, recording secretary. So it, Lori's suggesting that at paragraph one, we scratch from IE planning coordinator through uh, and yeah, or just, consultants yeah just plain and just leave out. the sentence as it is yeah mm -hmm. okay does anybody have any objection to that I'm sorry Karen yeah because um, you know it, it changes all the time and I don't think the town realizes you know what people are there for and what is their particular title for example when you're talking um, planning director yeah. how is he picked how is he, you know, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding in the town of how these people are there and what is their position. So I think it is important if you're going to list them under administrative staff. I think they should be listed, but I, there's got to be some explanation on how they are so not elected. They're appointed. And by who? The problem is... It changes, you know, let's say Mark decides to change it. This is prerogative. He, you know, he, they report to him. So let's say he changes it from planning director to planning what he had before, planning coordinator. So the, you know, what Lori is suggesting is if you put that in there, it's changing all the time. You could add planning director, I suppose, to that, and that might cover all the bases. Yeah, and, and what Karen said dovetails exactly into making sure that the RSAs for the planning board dovetail with other RSAs, and there's RSA 37-6, which um, discusses the authority and responsibilities of the town manager, and so those things all have to be dovetailed together so that they don't conflict with each other, Yeah, and so to, to your point, he has a personnel roster with job descriptions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you might want to put um, the personnel report directly to the town manager personal to 37-6 because technically they all do report to him. And so you want to make sure that's nice and clean and, and consistent across the board. Yeah. I, I think number three says that. Yeah. All personnel deemed necessary by the board shall be town employees and as such will be part of the town's personnel plan that defines supervisory roles, wages, benefits, hours, employment, and all other. It defines aspects. their roles, but it doesn't define to whom they report. And it doesn't define their responsibilities. Right. Their responsibilities. Exactly. The, exactly. Exactly. Well, the responsibilities well, are on the next page. It's a little bit yeah. disjointed here because all the duties that we require are on the next page. So it's a little bit out of order, if you will. Well, then maybe we should consolidate it and put it in a, an order that makes sense. Yeah. And, and the other thing I'd like to interject, maybe I'm just jumping ahead, but you know how he, on number three, it says all personnel deemed necessary by the board shall be town employees. I would like to add in there or insert in there or contracted by the town because we have a lot of right. contracted vendors yeah. like our note taker. Well, so I was she's not an employee. That, particularly for the recording secretary, that that's true. So we, we could just add that or yeah. contracted. What is it, contracted on contract or contracted by the town, right? Right. Yeah. And that covers us. Now, do you want to add in that item number three, 37 six there? Or, or do you want to put that referenced? Or? I, I think it's important to do that. I don't know what you guys think. Maybe we just add at the end, in accordance with uh, we'll RSA We'll report directly to town six. manager, pursuant to 37 six, yeah. RSA 37 six, okay. right? And then that way, everybody's all covered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's a clear chain of command and reporting authority, and you guys can find out exactly where it is. 
Just to, to, for my benefit, in the in number one, did we scratch that or not scratch the, that listing of uh, the? I, well, I mean, I would say, as Francine suggested, we we changed the first sentence. Shall be town employees or con contracted by the town. That's um, number three, Tim. I was referring to number one. Laurie, can you read what you you oh. had suggested? For I, I just wanted to have uh, planning staff and not planning coordinator. Just she's taking out the IE out the okay. list, the, the, so, the laundry list of what they could So be. you wanted to say the board by majority vote may define the responsibilities of any non-member planning staff right. as deemed as necessary, deemed. right? That's, is that what you're looking for? Want. Yeah, that sounds good to me. And the town manager determines whether he has a director or whether he has a right. admin, whatever he wants to call it, he can call it. Right. Jim. The other good thing, just one other thing, Tom. Uh, Taking recording secretary out of there is important because recording secretary is handled a little bit differently. So it's not, um, and I think by adding it as a contractor, I think you got it covered. I think so too. And Tom? it's generic enough to do so. Sorry, Tom. No, I was going to say that, you know, someone from outside of the board, especially like myself who's just joining, if I read the, the first paragraph that says the board might, by majority vote, may define the responsibilities of any non member planning staff, to me that says that we define the roles that. John Cashel, D. Voss, and Mike Dorman should have versus the town manager defining their role. Well, I, that's, a good, that's a good point because when I had an exchange of emails with, with Mark Pearson, I respect, you know, what, what he's saying mm -hmm. back to us, but I was referring to RSA 673.16. That's what you're kind of alluding to, Tom, number 12 in my handout. And, you know... I hadn't read this before, but, you know, if you read it, it says each local land use board may appoint such employees as it deems necessary for its work who shall be subject to the same employment rules or other corresponding civil employees of the municipality. And it goes on to say each board may also contract with planners, engineers, architects, and other consultants. Just let me finish it. The expenditures of the board, exclusive of guest reimbursements or amounts, shall be within the amounts appropriated for the purpose of the local legislative body which may provide such funds, equipment, and accommodations as it deems necessary or advisable for the board's work. So I think what it's saying, in, in reference to what you're saying, Tom, this says that the planning board can, I guess, petition, or I don't know how the right word is, but go to the town manager and say, this is what we need, town manager. These are the things we need, and we need these people. We need to get planners. We need to do, and we get a budget because the town has a budget for the planning board. It's a specific account. I want to say it's 4191, but if every year when the budget is done, there's a planning board budget. So there's kind of a, I just wanted to air out that, confusion in my mind and what Tom is saying, Mark said it's non-binding, this is non-binding, but I think what Mark is saying is you can't tell me who does what. I determine who does what. Not that I won't provide you with that because he, he said I will provide you with all these things, but you can't tell me that D does this or uh, John does that or whatever. So I think that's where the difference is. Well, I think the the distinction is we define the the jobs that we Duties. think are necessary what we need what we need then it's up to the town manager to staff to well work exactly. with the budget and fund them and also provide people to fill those roles and responsibilities that we define huh. so we don't we don't take um, Mark doesn't come to us and say, okay, you planning board, you can have three staff members. Then it's, it's not up to us to say what each of those staff members, each yeah. of those people can do. Rather, it's, it's the reverse. So we define the positions. If that's acceptable to Mark, then he funds it and assigns right. a staff to do that job that we've defined. Or, or he could go back to, he went back to me on the recording secretary, he said, Jim, don't you think it makes more sense for you to get involved in hiring a recording secretary? I said, yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, you, you look at the, um, you know, you get involved in the hiring, and that person essentially reports to you, 
as opposed to another person. It's a contract. Yeah. So there's a negotiation that goes on from the town manager and the board. Karen? Okay, I, I guess what, what, I, what really bothered me in the beginning was that the town will watch our meeting, say, for example, and they'll say, you know, who do you see? I didn't elect him. So where, where is his position? And what is he doing? So the town does not realize how much the manager, town manager, is hiring these people. Why? Because you're telling me because the planning board has asked for these people? Is that what you're saying? No, what we're saying is the planning board, and I think what Tim is saying, and we're all saying, we define what we need. We say we need, uh, and unfortunately, again, it's out of order, all these duties under duties in the next section, all these different things that we need, that D does. We, we go to him and we say, we need all these things, Mark. And Mark says, I'm going to hire a part-time planning director at whatever hours, and I'm going to have a full-time administrative assistant. That's how I'm going to meet your needs. And he can do that. So he determines how he will staff those duties. That's what I'm saying. I don't know mm -hmm. how to make those duties then, I guess, of that understanding to people who are asking. There's a lot of people that don't understand this. Well, I, I would think, and just one more thing, Francine, I think the way it's supposed to work, this is my understanding, there's a job description for D. We haven't seen that job description, mm -hmm. but I would imagine it would include a lot of these duties. Mm -hmm. There's a job description for Mr. Cashel, I would hope. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it would say what Mr. Cashel does. And that's Mark's responsibility to make sure he does those things. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a little strange here because in a perfect world, those people will report to us. That, that's not how it doesn't work that way. Well, it doesn't work that way. Right. Why does the plane work that way? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's, I mean, there's, no, go ahead. there's, there's, there's a couple, couple reasons. Track, yeah. One is there's um, planning, I mean, take a, the planning director's position. There's a lot more work that needs to be planned for in the town than what goes on in the planning board. Um, now, the fact that um, John is only here part time sort of limits that, but I mean, when you think about portal water, I mean, that's a, that's a huge planning exercise that could easily fall into that jurisdiction uh, once, it, once it gets up and running, you know. Um, there's um, uh, street repairs and the whole transportation thing. Nobody really did that. It was like a one-man band saying, Hey, we, you know, we need to do something over here. Um, so there's a lot of things that planning director typically does. One of them is to assist the, the planning board in terms of consulting, see what other towns do, recommendations on zoning changes, subdivision changes, and et cetera, et cetera. But he's a consultant that the town hired to help us do our job, whereas the planning staff that we're talking about in this paragraph is a job that we define that we need right. and ask the town to fund and find a person yeah, to do In that. fact, I don't believe in our rules there's any reference at all currently to the planning director who <coughs> does or anything. Should there be? I don't know. Karen's suggesting yes, but... The planning director is absent from our role. I, I don't. Um, I mean, how do I answer these people? They ask me, who, who is that? Oh, where, where did he come from? <laughs> you haven't contacted Jim. That's, that's, um, that's really another question. That's not really yeah. No, but it does relate because we don't list him as yeah. in his position. That's what I wanted. Well, I think what yeah. Tim's saying is he's not part of Planning staff. Exclusively he's not, not he's planning not included board, no. in these responsibilities. Okay. Mm. He's some he's something that he's another position that Mark came up with that wasn't even in what we needed. But the real question is, do we as a planning board need a planning director? I think. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know, Francine. So, so don't forget too, all of the boards and committees do require some 
similar positions like, quote, recording secretary. The board has one, the budget committee now has one, and we have one. So whether they, th these are all similar job descriptions and responsibilities regardless of what board or committee they're on. And so that's where that job description comes in and, um, and is defined. And I know that one of the first things Mark did when he came here is he reviewed all of the personnel policies and all the job descriptions. So those are all current and up to date. So if, if there's something that this um, board needs that's exclusive to this board, like you know a planning director or someone else, that's where we would have to go back and say, okay, Mark, you need to create another job and a, a job description and a set of responsibilities, et cetera. But there's a lot of um, generic positions that all boards and committees share. So but I don't I know if that helps or makes it worse. I don't that, know. That's true, and I think it would be useful, by the way, if it's possible for us to see what those job descriptions are for, the, I don't. Uh, for, yeah, I don't think that would be an issue. Um, let me write that down. I'm my just, little Funkin Wagner. I'll out. check if with it's Mark. An issue, All Mark right. Would, what would you like to see? What job descriptions would job you like to see? Job description for the planning director and the administrative assistant. Okay, administrative assistant is going to be generic. I'm going to tell you that right now because we have three of them. It you know, we have, have several all of these them. Duties in here? Well, that's where you as a planning board comes in and you can redefine Not it. Not in the job description, then. I, I don't believe it is. An administrative Probably assistant right, has yeah. a generic, yeah. this is what an administrative assistant yeah. does, but if you want her to do or she, he or she to do more on this board, that's where it's up to this board to define more right. responsibilities to that person. So up to this point, probably Dee got her direction from this, these rules. I'm sure she did. After a while, she knows what the things she needs. All right, to do. so you want a job description for planning director and who else? And an admin, admin assistant? Assistant to the planning board. Okay, well, it, there might not be admin assistant to the planning board, it just might be admin assistant. Okay. Okay, but, that, but I'll get you that. That is her present title. Right, it is. Yeah. Planning board, Specific administrative title. assistant. Right, that is her title. Okay, but I'm, what, what I'm saying is there may not be that specific job description, so I, and I don't and, know and that. Does, and does the planning department only pay her because she does wear many hats? Where, um, where I, does, where do, it's my, I, go ahead, I I'm sorry. now she's on the water department. What's her title on the water department? Uh, I think she's an administrative assistant on that too, but what we've tried to do is whatever time that she is on a particular board or committee, we allocate that time to that department's budget. So when she's on the water department, we're taking her time and whatever else she does, she's getting permits and, and whatever, we take that out of the water department budget. So, because that's the only fair way to do it. But if we, if we budget, if, and the budget was done for 2020, her entire salary was budgeted as part of the planning board. So if she works for the water department, would it? If there's an accounting adjustment for it. Just like with, do you remember Lori Sadowitz, who has three jobs? Right. We broke we broke that out a couple of years ago on the budget so that she has HR responsibilities in that department. She has, um, a, she's an assistant finance director in, in, in the finance budget. So we break them out. So we try to make it as transparent and matching up everything as closely as possible so people can really see what departments expend. And we're, we're going to be doing that shortly, very shortly. So, you know, the board will double check that and the budget committee will triple check it after we give it to, to them. Okay. So back to the, the changes to the rules here. I just want to point out that item number two under, now we changed it from administrative to planning staff. I think that second item is very, very important. Is it expected that not all the positions described in B1 above, now we scratched them, so maybe, I guess we don't, we would have to modify that, but it says all duties described below, it doesn't say below, but that's where they are, will be covered by available personnel. I think that's very critical to say that, that in, in effect, all the duties below will be provided. In other words, we will go to the town manager and say, we, we need these duties, mm -hmm. and he will provide them all. How he organizes it, that's up to him. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we, we need to change that second uh, uh, thing to take out, to, since we scratched the positions. Well, are um, we going to still have the positions with their... Um, Well, I, I would change. Well, I would change that to read. It is expected that all duties described below, which is on the next page, will be covered by available personnel. Is that all right? We'll have a job description of the duties that planning director and planning assistant. I'm starting to stay away from specific job 
because he could organize it differently? Uh, I, so what's I, wrong with the verbiage now? That does just exactly what you just said. Say again? The, the, the wording, the verbiage mm -hmm. of number two fulfills what you just said, as it is. Well, because we scratched the listing of the positions in, in number one, we can't refer to those positions. So I'm saying we scratch in from, is it, it is expected that all duties described will be co covered, all duties described below will be covered by available personnel. Yeah, I mean, actually, if we if we make the, the list in number one, just one planning staff, we don't even need paragraph two. two. Yeah, you don't need that. That's right. Because when we listed them, we realized, well, we're not going to have six people working for the planning board. Not, we're not going to fill all of those positions. So we added paragraph two to say not all of those positions would be filled, but all of the do, all of duties will be or responsibilities will be done by the available. Well, I, did, I think that saying but all you, responsibilities would be done is an important thing. Do you think that's covered in, in paragraph one? Yeah, because I mean, this is 225-3 is organization. So this says who we have, how we're organized. The next section 22-4 is duties. So for the officers and the planning staff and the committees, their duties are defined in the next section. The only thing that, that, that brought me up short on that, Tim, is if you look at that paragraph one under B, it says we may define those responsibilities. That doesn't mean that the town manager has to provide all of them by available personnel. That's we true. define them, doesn't mean he has to provide it. So I like to add, I like to leave that in there, maybe in paragraph one. All duties described will be covered by available personnel. It's kind of it's kind of saying to him that you know all these duties need to be provided, not that we define them. You know, if we define them, he could say, well, that's not that's not a duty that that I'm going to provide. So I think he should provide all the duties that we ask for. If if that if you think that's okay without putting that in, I just think it strengthens the uh, request, if you will. I don't know anybody else. Thanks. All right. Uh, well, I mean, let's let's you know let's read through the whole thing. We can come back and revisit that and see if it's redundant. Or yeah, we're going to come back and visit. It. I'm just saying that you know maybe we can scratch number two, but maybe bring that um, all duties will be covered by available personnel into number one. Exactly. Oh, somehow. Yeah. We well, can yeah. wordsmith it. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So oh, we made it through. You're still not going to be filling necessarily all of the positions either. No, we're not filling. It's, no, what we're saying is all the duties will be covered. Right, not but all you said positions. you were eliminating the first line. Yes or no? What? Yeah, What's that? You just I'm, said. Oh. Jeff, I'm talking about duties, not, not, not positions. I'm saying all the duties on the next page will be covered. I'm not saying positions. I'm saying duties. All so, duties will be covered by a That's the person. second line. Yeah. So, so the way it reads now is in paragraph one, we have listed one, two, three, four, uh, or personnel and other consultants with five different positions, say. So paragraph two says not all those are going to be filled, but all the responsibilities and duties that are defined in the next section Right. will be done. Yeah, I just want to leave that part um, in. So if we if we scratch that list, so paragraph one reads, the board may, by minority vote, may define responsibilities of any non-member planning staff as deemed necessary, blah, blah, blah. Then you don't need to say all the above positions may not be filled because you haven't, you've only defined just planning staff as a single Right, but oh, yeah. you may, you still need to say the second half of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. All duties described will be covered by available personnel. I, th I think you need to say the second half. I agree with you, you don't need the first half because you scratched the list. But I still think you need the second half. All right, so can I just read it to make sure we all understand what you're asking? Good. The board by majority vote may define the responsibilities of any non-member planning staff as deemed necessary 
to carry out all administrative work related to the proper and efficient implementation of board duties and obligations. All duties are expected to be covered by available staff. Is, is that good? I, I would say all duties described below. Described? Okay. Other than that, I agree. All right. And, you, and that number three becomes number two. All right, is everybody happy with that? Well, yeah, go ahead. You are saying that we eliminate even the two positions that we do have, the administrative assistant and the planning director. We're, uh, we're not tying his hands on what, how he provides the duties. That's what we're saying. Right, right. planning staff can be the planning director and the administrative he assistant. You could, could tomorrow say, I don't want a planning director, I want a planning coordinator, and they're, they're, they're going to provide all those duties. He could do that. He's done it before. Yep. We don't care as long as all the duties get done. I exactly. Think. The only thing that bothers me is I think you need a professional planner. And that still irks me a little bit. There's nothing in here about the, you know, a, a planning director, you know? Nothing. Well, let's go. Let, let me see if I can get the planning director's job description first. Okay. okay? Yeah, yeah, that would be a first it, start. Yeah. Yep. I'll, I'll talk to Mark it. and see if okay. I can get that. Okay. Well, let's keep going then. Uh, bottom of the page, committees and commission memberships. I don't see any need to change any of that. That's the RCPC. You know, those two. Um, could I just ask a question? Because I've never heard of the Transportation Advisory Committee or the Metropolitan Policy Committee. Tim? Tim, do we still have those? Or, do, I mean, are those things viable? Because I've never seen them or heard of them. Yeah. We do have it? The... Because um, I don't know who's on them. The, <laughs> the, because of our location in urbanized area, and I don't know which one we're in um, but it includes Lawrence I know that okay. um, if you are in such an area in order to get federal transportation dollars you have to define a metropolitan metropolitan policy organization MPO okay. if you don't have such an organization you can't get federal dollars okay. so um, in New Hampshire, there's four of those, the Rockingham, MPO, um, Stratford, and Nashua and Manchester. Okay. Um, and the way that the state and RPCs have agreed is the MPO boundaries would match the Planning Commission boundaries. So when we appoint representatives to the Rockingham Planning Commission, mm -hmm. Those people also are our representatives to the Metropolitan Policy okay. Organization. Okay. Okay. So there's no need to change what we have. All right. To, yeah. I, no. I, all right. I just never heard of it before. I, yeah, okay. I, all right. Thanks, Tim. I, all right. And the third it's... one talks about the CIP, and um, that does need to be changed. Okay. So we now get down to duties 225-4. Um, it talks about the the chair's duties. Um, and you can read through this. But I'm going to suggest three additional duties of the chair I'd like to put in here. Yeah. Number one, I think it should say specifically that the chair shall set the agenda, unless okay. anybody has any objection. So I'm yeah. adding that somewhere in there. Um, I'm going to keep that one for the second thing I would add is the chair shall speak for the board. I think it needs to be said that, and I think this is true of the Board of Selectmen. It's true chair, of all boards and committees, the all of them, the yes. So I would add shall speak for the board. And the third item might be a little bit more controversial, um, but let me throw it out. <laughs> shall review and approve the annual planning board budget. I, I had that in there too, I that agree with that. Oh, per, or assist in the department's annual budget preparation. William yeah. Myers, think alike. Well, then, <laughs> then you messed so up added, on that one, Jim. <laughs> all right, so does anybody have any objections to adding those to the chair? Nope. Okay. Vice chair, I don't think we need to, to, to change anything. Um, I suppose we could give uh, Tim more duties. And, you know, fine with me. <laughs> but I think that's generic enough. 
Now, we come to a recording secretary as, a, as duties. Now, the recording secretary, it kind of looks like the recording secretary comes from the board, but it doesn't. The recording secretary is a separate position, a contract position. So do we leave it here? Do we pull recording secretary out and have a separate section on recording secretary? I mean, we can leave it here. It's pretty harmless. It does say what the recording secretary does. I don't think we have to change it. Yeah. Do, do, Jim, do we need to add that the recording secretary must make sure that um, the draft minutes are made available publicly on the town website, or do you think that RSA 91A thing, it covers it? Uh, 91A is pretty covers broad, it? I think. Covers it, covers it, all right. Yeah. Cause, and, I, cause, and I know Charlene is very familiar with 91A. So. All right, and so have we made arrangements to have her bring give the draft yeah. minutes yeah. to Beth so she can publish them on the yeah, website? Yeah, I'm going to change. There are some things that the planning staff would still do. That's D. Uh, it's letter D, not D Voss, yeah. D planning staff. Uh, okay, in there, there it is, yeah. She's still okay, doing yeah, some yeah, yeah. things. I'm All gonna right. make some changes in that. But I, I'm gonna suggest that the recording secretary is okay where it is. Okay. Unless anybody sees any. Yep, yeah, that's no okay. big deal. So we go to planning staff. Um, I guess we say planning staff because we don't wanna say specifically administrative assistant or planning director. So we say planning staff. And the first, number one, ensure draft copies are available to the, she still does that. She okay, makes sure yeah, they're all right, available. I she got it. She holds them, and then if anybody asks, she has them. Now, Charlene sends them to her. And number two, I'm gonna change that to read, ensure draft and approved minutes yep. are posted to the town website, because we had that discussion last time, and she did post the draft minutes. Um, at the top of the draft minutes, if you looked at them, they said, you know, uh, these are draft, they may change. Mm -hmm. And so once once the draft minutes are approved like they were today, I think you understand, Charlene, you're gonna, you know, take the red stuff at the, off the top, the draft, and just send them to DeVos. Right, okay. Right. Right. And she'll post them. And that's the way it works. So now we're into planning staff and we have quite a number of bullets in terms of responsibilities. It's 7.38. We can bang through these. Go ahead. She'll set the, she'll set, set the agenda. I'm going to put there under the chair. I've added that phrase, she'll set the agenda. I added that. We talked about that. Yeah. That's in there, but down here you got number three, work with the chair. That's going to be eliminated? No, I th she does work with the chair to prepare mm -hmm. the board yeah. meetings. Yep. And what, what really happens behind the scenes, you guys don't see, is um, I, early in the week preceding the meeting, I sent an email to John. I said, do you have any other topics? Do you have any topics? And they mm -hmm. get back to me and I say, here's the, the agenda. And then they get back and we go back and forth and then we come up yep. with the agenda. Yep. So I have the final approval. We do the same thing. We do the she's got to have input yeah. into it. So I'd leave that there. And, and I think number four still applies. She's still posting the agendas. She's still posting the meeting notices. She's responsible for the meeting notices, the public meeting notices. All that stuff. Um, and she does deliver the draft meeting in our folder. She does deliver it to us, so that doesn't change, I don't think. Number four. Is that really okay, number four? Adequate okay. review before the meeting. Last line. Yeah, I, I think we ought to leave that in there. That's definitely. I'm asking, what's the time? You want to add a specific time? What do you think is an adequate time? I don't know. What are you suggesting? Huh? Are you suggesting a change to it? I'm asking for it. It is kind of it, it is kind of indefinite. I agree with right. you. That's what I'm saying. And what do you think is an appropriate time? Well, what I think and what everybody else thinks, it doesn't matter. Do we want to make it more definitive is the question, right? Do you want to make it more definitive? Yeah. Okay, so what would we put in there? That's what I, I I'm asking. It's, um, do you have a suggestion, Jeff? Three days? I think the Friday before the, the Friday. meeting. The Friday before the meeting. I like that. In fact, John has agreed to that. So That's three business so, days. That's right. So why don't we just put the Friday before the meeting yep. right. instead of for an adequate review. Yep. So material why don't we say for an adequate review before the meeting at least the Friday, at least the Friday mm -hmm. before the meeting. 
So then she could send it out a couple of days before that. <laughs> no problem. Does that work? Um, the only question I would have is what about last minute stuff that some of the applicants want to give us? You know, I, the, the I can't, applicants, they, they do have a deadline. Yeah. yeah. All right, so you're going to just make them hold to the rules. Okay, I'm good with so that. John and I had this discussion, and John is of the opinion that we really need to get to the point with, and stuff comes in late, sorry, too okay, late. I, I agree with that. Because okay. otherwise, what <laughs> yep. happens is human nature, they abuse it, and it's, you know, the day before, 11 o'clock before the meeting, Yes, three o'clock for an attorney review <laughs> be, yeah, be, on the day of our meeting. Yes, I agree with that. What's well, very important so you want is to make this it board. For Monday then? No, no, no. Oh, Friday no. seems no, Friday. good. Friday's just good. Friday before the meeting. That's what I added. Yep. And if it doesn't get in, it doesn't get in. I, I, all right, I'm good with that. Okay. Yep. I see what you're saying. You're saying so now if the lawyer does get in Monday, at least that is. No, we're saying Monday is a non starter, it's Friday before the meeting. If it doesn't get in Monday, if it comes Monday, it's too late. Well, Absolutely. we're being a little bit hard ass on it, but I think it's important to, well, to yeah. have rules. Unless you specify, uh, unless there is extenuating circumstances that the board agrees is acceptable. Yeah, look, yeah, you could know. add that phrase in there. That's yeah. good, Tom. Yeah. yeah, you uh, want to again? You want to shoot yourself in the foot. Unless there's an extenuating circumstances. Extenuating circumstances yeah. that the board deems as acceptable. That's good. Or the chair. Well, should the chair make chair. that decision? I think yeah. the chair should yeah. do that yeah. personally. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. Put the pressure that's on good. me, right? Yeah, yeah. Please get this in. So what are you changing it to? All right, so you're going to add exactly what now? Okay, we're going to add after the word uh, number four, after the word meeting, we're going to put a comma at least the Friday before the meeting, unless there are extenuating circumstances agreed to by the chair. Right, that's good. Yeah. That's good, Tom. Say Thank that you. again. <laughs> you know, we should have this right up on the thing, and we should we be able should. to change it in Word. Kind of, I know, this would be yeah, so much easier if we to, could do that. Yeah. You're right, next time we'll have it all written out, we'll, we'll look at it. Okay, so, so number now? five, that's number four. So number five, I'm going to suggest a change there. I got a, I got a suggestion. Too. Okay, well let me let me go first. You're going to jump on mine. Oh, let me let me just go first. <laughs> Receive and st timestamp. That, that was mine. Okay, so before the between receive and applications and timestamp all, and the reason for that is, it, John even said this is the best practice. When the application comes in, they should be timestamped. Mm -hmm. And we should know, you know exactly when it was submitted because that starts the clock. It's mm -hmm. a very critical yes. thing. If yes. you look, I looked at Salem. I looked at uh, I looked at three or four different. They have that in there, and the suggested one from the OSI is to add a timestamp. So, yeah. and if there should be any legal issues, then you, it's yes. it's documented. Right. We don't do that. No. We don't timestamp. What's that? We don't timestamp I've never seen it. Applications? No. Is there a timestamp? I, I don't know. I've never, I don't remember seeing it. Well, we're, we're adding it to the rules, so there better be one. Yeah. Right after number receive. five, receive and timestamp all applications. So no other changes to number five. I didn't have any other ones. All right. I want to take a chance, a uh, minute to look through there. Okay, so. Let's move to number six on the top of the next page. Where did think, you add that to? I don't see how you're fitting that in. Okay, uh, number five, Jeff. Yeah. Receive and timestamp all applications. Uh, I'm just putting and timestamp all between receive and applications. Okay. Uh, D does that. Now, okay, but we're putting it in the rules, Jeff. I understand that. I'm just saying that she does do that. I have seen many uh, I seen applications. I've never seen a timestamp. Uh, the timestamp is on what she receives in the office when she gets it. Okay, well, we don't need it's to debate it. Multiple times. It may not be on the copies that we see. Okay, then it should be harmless. She, she's doing it. I'm not it saying already. there's anything wrong with it. I'm just telling you that's the way she's been doing it. Well, I think it's important <coughs> for the planning board to see that timestamp, too. Okay. <coughs> anyway, we're at number six. I don't think we need to change. 
Number seven, um, I'm going to add a D to that. Now, this is correspondence as directed by the chair of the board. I think the first three still are good. I would like to add number uh, D, or whatever it is, D. No correspondence shall be sent until reviewed and signed by the chair. Everybody okay with that? And again, that may be what's happening now, but I think it's important to put it in there. No correspondence sent. No direct, no correspondence shall be sent until reviewed and signed by the chair. Now that doesn't cover uh, notices of decision. Uh, notices of decision are pretty straightforward. The D sends those out to the abutters and to the applicant and says, this is the decision that the board made. So the chair doesn't need to sign that. You know, that's just a notice. This is what we voted on. This is the decision we made. So how do we notify so the board to be notified, right? Well, no, those, we should get copies of those, but I don't think we need to put it in the rules. Because we know we voted on it. I mean, it was in the minutes, and we, we know we voted on it. So it's not no mystery to us. <clears throat> okay, so where are we adding that? Okay, Jeff. D I'll read it again. 7D. I added D. You want me to read it again? Please. Okay. No correspondence shall be sent until received, reviewed, and signed by the chair. And what by the chair? No correspondence shall be sent uh, until reviewed and signed by the chair. Signed, okay. Signed by the chair. Sorry. Okay. You having fun, Tom? Yes. Yeah, all right, good. <laughs> um, no changes to 8 and 9. I, you know, I don't want to go right through them. If you guys read them, if you see any, we need any changes. I don't think we do for those two. Number 10, um, I wanted to add a sentence at the end of it. I don't know, maybe it's not necessary, but I wanted to add the following sentence. The planning staff is responsible for the accuracy of impact fee calculations and assessments. I'm adding that to number 10. Now, tell me if I'm wrong, it may already be in there. It says impact fee account. I, I guess it's sort of implied. Can but you I think read it's very again? important that the impact fee calculations are the responsibility of the staff. I think it, I'm adding a sentence at the end of number 10, after the word task, the planning staff is responsible for the accuracy of impact fee calculations and assessments. Of impact fee calculations and assessments. In other words, they calculate it, they give it to us, like, like what happened last time. You now we had a situation where we had two floors and there was some discussion. Yeah, on that. that's right. And I think we concluded that it should <clears throat> be two floors. Had we not caught that, that was that was I, like thirty six thousand dollars. Yeah, we would have gotten so. screwed out of all those impact fees. I don't I don't really <laughs> think we need to yeah. add that. You think it's implied in there, Tim? Yeah. Yeah. So it's the planning board or the planning staff. Yeah. I mean that. W I mean last last week. I mean that was a mis we made a mistake. I mean that's. But where is it implied? Where does it say that that, that the planning staff is responsible for the accuracy? It says impact fee account. It says setting up financial tasks and include setting up, maintaining, and closing escrow accounts, impact fee account. Construction you don't think you need to problems. go further and say you don't think it's necessary. Okay. I think that's implied. If you're going to maintain an impact for your account, you do it correctly. <laughs> what does everybody else think? I mean, you could clarify by saying account and calculation or something like that. That's sort of a slight variation that. That's what the responsibility is of taking care of the impact fee account is. You do the proper calculations. Yeah, mm -hmm. and accountability. That's implied. I mean, you could add, you could add, do the same for escrow closing accounts. When she comes back and says there's five hundred thirty-seven dollars and twenty-eight cents left okay. in the escrow, that's fine. 
I don't have any problem if everybody agrees with that. So do you want to go with Tom's compromise? Or you want to just not put that sentence in? What did, what did you say it was time impact? I mean, if account implies calculations, then I think we're fine. Um, read what you so do you want to put impact fee calculations? Account and calculations. Account and calculations, That's, all right. That was just a okay. thought, you know, if, yeah, you, just if you want the clarity. Well, I guess I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Tim. Tim's saying it's implied. I, I, I you know, as long as they know that that's that's true, that's important. Because mm. this, you know, it's a very, very critical number. Can There's I a lot of dollars. Can we can we have a uh, at our next workshop meeting? Can we go over impact fees? Yes. The accounts and how it how it is being calculated because. Is square footage on a residential home with two floors, is that being calculated by the footprint, or is that no. square footage? I don't know. It's I don't, you know? Square footage. Okay. It, so then why wasn't a commercial building square footage? Why was it footprint? She made a mistake, is all I'm saying. Because we have so few multi-story commercial buildings. Do we know, do we know how Exeter Med was done? I'm assuming square footage. Maybe we, maybe we could find that out. I'm not sure about that, Tim. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it next time, because Exeter Med may be a problem, too. But let's talk about it next time. Let's move on. That's not really what we're I think I agree with Laurie we should talk about it. We'll do it next time. OK, so scratch that sentence, then. Move to 11. I don't see any need for any. Um, I'm a little bit puzzled on that, but uh, it says that the planning staff will make on-site inspections. Um, I don't. Does that happen, Tim? Um, organize, maybe not make, but organize on-site inspections. No, that's not talking about the. Isn't that code enforcement inspections? Doesn't well, when we went to do Milton Cat, who organized that when we did the walkthrough? Oh, you mean um, site walks? Yeah, that's different. Is that, what is that is? different? I think that's different. Oh, all right. It's a different thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah site walk is number nine, right up, up yeah, above number there. Nine is all right. Walk. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. It, it doesn't. What is this, Tim? What, it doesn't come up very often. Right. Inspections. Um, you know? What, I'm, so, I'm sorry. What is 11? I, th I think that's, that would be the building, four. the code enforcement. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think this was more if if we had a question about a particular item you know subdivision or site plan we'd ask d to send her out to look. take a look and um, research it certainly i mean i don't care if we get rid of it just leave it in there um well i mean it's not, we'll, it's not hard it's not hard and leave it or get rid of it it, it doesn't matter um so we'll just leave it in there we don't need to take it out. Okay, so we go to number 12. Um, this is her, uh, well, I should say the planning staff's responsibility in terms <clears> of the <throat> master plan. I think that needs to stay in there. Mm -hmm. Number 13, it gets into the capital improvement. It says the planning staff gets involved in that. Is that, in fact, true? Is that, does, do they do? So D gets involved? Okay. Yeah, she's, she's involved. Okay. I didn't know. 14, training updates. This is what we referred to before, and D does a pretty good job of, you know, laying out this, you know, possible training for people, particularly new people. So you guys should hear pretty soon. If you don't, just, you know, ask her for some suggestions. Number 15, I think that should stay. Number 16 should stay, I guess. Is there anything additional we want to add for duties? That's plenty. That's more than enough, yeah. Okay. So we go into, we're really doing good here. We're into meetings. Okay. I don't have, okay, go ahead. Okay, on building inspector, I've always wanted to know what his exact duties are. So the building inspector, I'll tell you what I think. The building inspector is the town manager, and he is responsible for enforcing the building ordinances in town, any violations, 
And we really don't have anything to it's do with it. It's the building code he enforces. What? He enforces the building code. That's what I said, yeah. Okay. He enforces it. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't hear you. So it's not, he's not, you know, what confused me is he's listed as a staff for the planning board. He's really not a staff for the planning board. Is he, Tim? That's correct. So Tim? in our case, Mike Dorman does two things. He's the building inspector, which means building permits go through him. He goes out, makes sure the two by fours are in the right place and the concrete was poured correctly and you know, all those construction yeah. related stuff. Structural and integrity. He's also mm -hmm. our code enforcement officer. So he is in charge of making sure that um, all of the, um, all the commercial residential properties are complying with zoning. Um, most of the time, uh, I mean, unless he's driving by and happens to catch one, most of the time somebody complains about something. Oh, gee, my neighbor's doing something suspicious. And so he gets a call uh, and then he goes to an investigate. I would say most of the complaints, I think, come in like that. I mean, you know, one person, unless you hire him to drive around town 24 hours a day, you're not going to find, you know, okay, so the violation. When the Mike, uh, he report, board, port, yeah. sorry, reports to the town manager. We don't think anywhere here that should be listed. No, it's not really no. part of our purview. No. No, people no. mistake and think that, that, that the zoning, that the, you know, that the building inspector is part of a planning board, not. Yeah. And, and Karen, he, he's an employee of the town, and it's covered under that RSA 37-6. Okay, so he is covered under that. Yep. Yeah. And I think when Mike was out, uh, Mark, like, got, got a part-time person. He did. So he did. It's Mark's responsibility to find somebody. Yep. Yeah. Do we have somebody out there now? Mar uh, uh, Mark, yeah. Mike Dorman. He's doing it now. There's somebody else up there. Yeah. Temporary. Okay, so okay, so we move on to meetings. I didn't see anything in the meeting section to change, all the way down to disqualification. Yeah, I, I have yeah. a uh, mm -hmm. on meetings. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to um, I would like to you know say that our first uh, Wednesday of the month is workshop. Add that as another paragraph. And then the second Wednesday, I don't know. Maybe that's called the regular meeting, and that would be with public hearings. Yeah. And I had brought this up before when we amended the rules and procedures. That you know, we have sometimes we have many public hearings in a night, and I think our cutoff point to hear a new public hearing should be nine o'clock. We finish what we're working on. If it's nine o'clock, we're working on a public hearing. We finish that, but we don't take on any more new after. I mean, I agree. <laughs> we were here till almost eleven o'clock. I, I mean, I don't, if that's the case, then I really don't want to be the on only, this board anymore. The only anymore. thing I would say to it is this: that if we have like we had four hearings last time, let's say we got through two of them and we didn't want to start the other ones, we probably should vote to accept them as complete. So we fulfill that 30-day time frame. We don't have to open the hearing. We just vote that they're complete. Because if we don't do that by the next meeting, that time period would have elapsed. Yeah. So we could, we could vote that they're complete or not complete. That's, but I agree with the, yeah. I'm not sure if I agree with the 9 o'clock. I like going and getting things done, but I would go with 9.30. I'm just maybe an outlier there. Well, Maybe I'm crazy. Yeah, but you know, don't forget there's some people at work and, and they're doing this as a volunteer to, you know, for community service. And, and you have to be sensitive to that. Yeah. So uh, I agree with Laurie. Agree with nine o'clock? Nine o'clock. Okay. I would just say that if it's 907 and we have a very basic thing, then the poor person's been waiting. You know, we could maybe vote to, to hear so that. So the chair could add dis discretion. Yeah, chair's chair. discretion. Yeah, yeah, of course we could add that, but. Sure. So we could write that. I, maybe I you could. You know, last, last year we had a lot that 
came before us and it was like every meeting was very long. Are you trying to scare me away already? <laughs> no, no. We're trying to keep you. That's why we want to stop it at I, 9 o'clock. I, I, I agree. I think we're going to get more and more. Fortunately, with, Tom, you, know? you don't scare either. I support the 9. I'm just saying if there was a yeah. five-minute hearing. Well, yeah. You know. Yeah, and, and you know, and it's up to the chair to get consensus from exactly. the board as to exactly. whether they want to per continue. So if three of us say, I'm tired, we're not doing this, then that's consensus. I don't have the stop. exact words, but I can add that to uh, AA, -A, what she just said. I'll, okay. I'll write something up. Okay. Just put what she said. <laughs> what she said, yeah. There you go. Uh -huh. The other thing is, it's up to the chair, I know at the beginning of the meeting, if I see something that's going to take very little time, I put it up front. So yep. I did that last time, and I think that's the way to do it. Yeah, we've always. Okay, so if you don't mind, I'll take either you or I could write something. We don't have to do it now. Okay. Uh, okay. If you want to write it. Two twenty five five A. Yeah, she's yeah. gonna she's gonna add it to the regular meeting. She's gonna say that the first one is a workshop, the second one is the hearings, and that and that we would the close at nine o'clock. So it would be added to paragraph A. Okay. Mm -hmm. Special meetings, I don't think we need to uh, change that. Non-public. We very rarely oh. have non-public, Tim. No. Have um, you ever had one? Yeah, we, we had just, a couple, but there were few and far between. The question is back on, if we have a 9 o'clock cutoff, what do, we, what do we do if there's hearings left? They would be, they would be, they would be continued, right? But you haven't opened them yet, potentially. So then what Jim said, we would have to at least vote that it's vote complete. Is complete. So, I mean, you complete. could, I mean, you could open it and, and continue it, but, you know, in the same sentence. You could do that, um, but why do it? You but when are you, I mean, what are you going to continue it to? But you don't have to open it. It's not the next, required. The next Another month? regular meeting. Which would be in a month. Right. It could be the workshop meeting. I think that's what he's saying. So now we have the next at the, wor at the workshop meeting. If you have a situation where you didn't get to a hearing, you voted it complete. You can't wait a, another month. You you have to now have that hearing at the workshop meeting. I think that could happen, right? I mean that. I mean that that seems only fair. I mean you could continue a meeting for uh, how long? I think you can continue up to sixty-five days, right? Yeah. So maybe well, it's better you, what you said. We would vote complete, open the hearing, and close it, and then continue. Then it, not close it, but continue it. So that's how you would take care of it. And then you got 65 yeah. minutes. So we'll, we'll, I'll come up. Maybe Lori can come up with something. We'll come up with the next. We don't have to nail it down now, but your point's well taken about that. Is that what you meant? Well, yeah. Um, yeah, because you could do it rather than just fold it's complete you could continue it well I mean I, I think you um, if we're gonna have a cutoff which I'm not arguing for or against um, in the agenda then you probably want to list um, except it's complete except it's complete except it's complete Public hearing number one, public hearing number two, yeah, public hearing number three. Yeah, you do it that three. way too. Yeah. So. So you accept it as complete, but you don't open that hearing. That's you true. Accept the next one. You yeah. accept them all as complete. Right. And then move back. That's a good idea. Um. And I, I guess the other thing, if that's our policy, you need to make uh, make it well known that if hearings, you know, we're not going to hear a public hearing um well i don't know you just, just got to be careful so we can discuss it more in the next yeah, we can discuss it more i mean we we have like we'll put up we'll put up something for discussion next time yeah hmm. okay okay so nothing on non-public cancellations i don't think that needs to be the quorum is the quorum appointment of alter alternates and that that is what it is Disqualification, I think it's important that members need to understand how you become disqualified. Um, we should read through this because it's important that you understand that. And it basically it says no member shall participate in deciding any question or sit upon any hearing in which the member has a direct personal or financial interest in the outcome that differs 
from the interest of other citizens. And kind of the way I see that is um, it's financial or personal interest. You know, when in doubt, you should probably recuse yourself. That's kind of how I feel about it. But this is the wording right out of 673.14, which is handout 11. So I'm not necessarily saying we have to change it. I just make sure everybody understands when you should recuse yourself. Now, it does provide for a vote. Um, in, in number two on the next page, the board shall, upon the request of that member or any member, vote on the question of whether the member should be disqualified. So when it comes in doubt, any member can say, well, I think we should vote on this. You know, I think this guy is disqualified, you know, shouldn't sit for this particular one. This shouldn't come up that often. I mean, you should be very careful about stating your opinion on, you know, you can't state your opinion on Facebook that I'm against this or for it or whatever. That's very dangerous to do it. So. so I don't think we need to change that. I just thought everybody should understand that. So we go, go on to personal electronic devices at meetings. Um, I'm not going to say anything, Charlene, about your phone. <laughs> no, just kidding you. So you should, everybody's phone should be muted for the meetings, but, you know, I think we need to add a section on remote meetings. I was just going to say that, yep. The chair or the planning director needs to have their phone on, you know, if you get emails or, uh, so we need to add maybe a paragraph or a sentence that says only the chair or the planning director or only, you know, specific people that need to have the phone on for emails or phone. phone. So I'll, I'll write a sentence to that effect. And I'll, I'll, I'll also throw out, do we need a complete, <clears throat> do we need to add to the rules a complete section on remote meetings? I don't know. I mean, it could be a lot that we could put in here for remote meetings, but that, now somebody has to write it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, would, I would say, one, let's hold off yeah. and Yes. Once we're out of the emergency order, yeah. Um, Which is when, Tim? <laughs> well, I, the way it's the going, it could be uh, 2023. Yeah. I don't okay. know. Uh, By Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, more and more um, boards are communicating remotely. I mean, it's and now that the the virus kind of forced. Um, a lot of us into it, whether we wanted to or not. Um, you know, it, it's it's not all bad sitting at home with your shoes off, um, participating yeah. in the meeting. Um, as, I think it's good for applicants too, um, because um, you know they don't have to drive all the way from Manchester or what have you. Um, yep, yeah, I mean there are yeah, I mean there are cases when, um, particularly if a project is being introduced, uh, where it's probably be who's the applicant to, to be here. Um, but um, nonetheless. Um, oh. So anyway, I think if we if we just hold off because okay. after the virus thing, things are going to change yeah. anyway. You can always do it later. Um, I'd imagine that the state's going to provide some sort of guidance and that we could reference that yeah. as our proper procedures. Right, right. Okay. All right, order of business. I didn't have any changes on that. Oh, wait a second, I did. Under order of business, I added a three. And I can't read my writing. Oh, I just wanted to clarify that the chair may change the order of public hearings at his discretion. That happens anyway. You know, like I said, if I see a, a hearing that's only going to take 15 minutes or whatever, or 10 minutes, I put it up front. So I'm just adding number three, the chair may change the order of public hearings at his, his, his or her discretion. Does anybody have any objection to that? No. I didn't see that in here, but I knew that happened. Oh, well, number two. Sorry, Tim? The board may, by a vote at a regular meeting, change the above order to better accommodate the public or the board. Yeah, I just wanted to add that the chair may change the order of public hearings. I'm not talking about the order of you know, the, the complete order of all the different things. I'm just saying public hearings within the public hearings. You know, I put this public hearing first versus that public hearing. Well, that's what that is. 
Pardon? That's what number two number, says. So number number two says the board has to it vote on it. the board may vote at the regular meeting. I'm saying that rather than voting, the chair, by his prerogative, his or her, may change the order of public hearings. So it's not covered in number two. So do you want to just say, change the board to the chair? No, I think you still need that. The board may, you know, want to change things around. That's fine. So leave that in, but also give the chair the prerogative on public hearings. You don't need to have a vote. For specifically for public hearings. The, the board, the chair may change the order of public hearings at okay. his or her discretion. Okay? All right. All right. Voting. Uh, I didn't see any changes there. Subdivision and site plan review, I all the way through there, I didn't see any need for changes there. In fact, all the way through the end, I have nothing until you get to communications. Unless somebody else says something. No. Okay, time check, we're at 812. We're doing good. All right, communications. Um, where are you at? What I had here. The last page, 225.7. 225.7, I'm saying number A, or letter A. I was going to add a sentence, maybe it's not necessary. Again, maybe I'm going too far here, but I'm adding after the first sentence there in A, staff will ensure the chair and the board receive correspondence in a timely manner. Maybe that's already covered. It's too much. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we need to what? say that. Don't, don't put that I don't in. think we need to no. say that. No? No, okay. D will let you know. Okay. Beth lets me know when I get mail right away, so All right, she'll do the same that. thing. Okay, I have nothing till the end, and a number of the amendments at the end, I think we need to put, and I have the actual OSI wording somewhere here. I have the OSI suggested wording for that, that section. For amendments? Let me, let me read the wording that the OSI has compared to ours. Okay, so their suggested section amendment reads as follows. The board's rules of procedure may be amended by a majority vote of its members. Okay, that's per the sentence one. The board shall hold a public hearing prior to the adoption of new rules or amendment of existing rules. Notice for the time and place of the hearing shall be provided in RSA 675-7. The amended procedure shall be filed with a municipal clerk. So I'm suggesting that we do that. I'm not sure why it only says two successive meetings. It doesn't say anything about a public hearing, but I think we had public hearings before, didn't we? Um, I. Um, and do a little more research. I I think the when the first mention of a public hearing in the in the OSI thing that you just read, I think that's not correct. I, I think they you meant, don't think that's I think they meant correct. public meeting. You don't not, need a public hearing. Yet. Not a public hearing. Okay. Um, I'll I'll check on I'll check on it because some, somewhere else. Um, and I don't remember where I, but just tonight, I, there's a conflict where it says just public meeting. So, um, I'll, I'll so you check don't think that. we need to, to add public hearing then? So I don't really well, want to have a public hearing. We don't need one. I mean, if the if the RSAs are consistent and say public hearing, then yeah, we need to change ours to pu say public hearing. No, I don't see that. The only place I saw it was in there suggested. Yeah. So the reason that we um, have two successive meetings um, was because people were not playing nice together. So there'd be a three-member quorum and they'd change the rule of procedure. <laughs> <laughs> and two people come back the next night and, you know, change next morning and find out, oh, oh gee, what the heck went on? Oh, my. Um, so um, okay. that was the reason for two. It, so you're suggesting just leave it the way it is? I, I would. Okay. Does anybody have any objections? No. No. No, that's fine. <laughs> I know everybody wants to get done, so. <laughs> but it, All right. So that's it. Um, I'll put something together. Uh, see if, Laura, you can give me a couple of things, and I'll, yeah. I'll send it out to everybody so you'll see in red what the changes are okay. for okay. next meeting. And we will cover this next meeting because we only have the one hearing. Yeah. 
<laughs> now, the only other uh, subject that I have, do you have something? Yeah, no, I just wanted to add that. So you're going to make all the corrections. Yeah. I'm going to send it out. It's going to be, you know, in red what the changes are. You'll know exactly what the changes are. Mm -hmm. So I would say next, the next meeting, would we would consider that our first yeah, reading. That'll be the first. Yeah. We're not in any rush to do this yeah. or do it right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, we will. Okay. So that's that topic. Um, I only had one other thing, unless anybody else has anything. Okay. 71 Plastow Road. Does that ring a bell? Oh, yes. 71 Plastow Road. Yeah. Is it, are you going to give okay. us an update on that? Well, <laughs> if any, <laughs> I went, I asked Mike to give me an update, and this is Mike's update. It's still in the court. There's an appeal before the Supreme Court of New Hampshire. Now, I was surprised to hear that because I remember last time we heard from D was that, you know, he had, ex he had run out of appeals. But Mike says it's still before the Supreme Court of New Hampshire. It's still under appeal. It has nothing to do with evictions or the governor's order on evictions. It's under appeal, is what Mike said. It was my understanding that every time it goes before the Supreme Court and gets shut down, he goes to another part of the law to create this all over again as far as an appeal. He doesn't use the same uh, process. He, he goes to another section. So there's got to be some kind of well, a, you know, a, a statute of limitations for this and how many times it goes before the Supreme Court. I'm thinking. I don't know. Go ahead. But when, when does the planning board revoke the site plan? Because we haven't done that. So the, the problem is, I would say, that just complicates things. And what, what does it accomplish? Gets rid of the cars. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No. He's in violation of the site plan with the cars there. So if we revoke, revoke the site plan, he's still in violation of the previous site plan. So it's, you know, the one thing you don't want to do is revoke the site plan and then have him file yet another appeal because the planning board revoked the site plan and we shouldn't have done it and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. That could add another year of appeals and reappeals, uh, you know, I, I just don't see that we can uh, accomplish anything, and it may, in fact, but hurt there's a the new, process. But he's not the owner any longer. There's a, there's a new owner there. There's a bank that owns it. Yeah. No, there's a new no, owner. No, there's a, new, a, a private, oh, there's a new private owner. person bought it from the bank. Just for Tom's benefit and Charlene, this is a uh, property on uh, 125 where this guy for four years have kept maybe 30 cars. I think you're aware of where it is, Tom. Everybody knows where it is, yeah. yeah. But it's just like, you know, something's got to give here because it's gone on for so long. It's just embarrassing, actually. So, whatever. Do, do we have an update on um, any adjudication from the judge with Milton Cat? I have nothing on that. Do you, Tim? No. I guess the judge has not decided on it, so it's just surprising. I thought he would have. You know, especially if it was just for ministerial work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Pretty good. I'll close the meeting at 820. All right. Thank you all.